drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos what's up guys this is manoj patani i welcome you all on behalf of the idpedia world it's been a fantastic morning outside and i'm sure that you guys must be enjoying your life your surroundings your environment to the fullest like as usually guys perfect so guys we have already completed our three of the presentations in which we did discuss a few of the relevant topics relating to capital budgeting this is going to be the fourth video presentation in which i'm going to discuss a few more relevant topics relating to this particular chapter capital budgeting which with you guys following forthcoming video presentation fifth presentation will be like i'll be concluding all the theoretical concepts relating to capital budgeting so that by the next to next video we'll be marking the beginning of the kind of questions which are like likely to appear in your examination while you give them up in your respective attempts so you'll get to know about the kind of feel uh, what kind of questions are usually expected out of you to be like delivering your performance while assessing them up in the ce final examinations so are you guys ready for this particular presentation with these remarkable topics let's mark the beginning fast number seat belts we are about to take off but before doing that i just want to make you reassure and reiterate one thing you are honoring pro promise and that was revision revision and revision so do revise your concepts because that is something which is extremely essential for you guys to understand so the first topic of the day will be risk adjusted discount rate method okay so guys we all know this thing this particular thing that no two industries are same okay you guys must be some of you guys must be like working for SM, fmcg industry and the other another side of the table maybe across another part of india there will be another person who will be like working with maybe construction company then there will be another person who will be like working with pharmaceutical company let's suppose do you even think that the kind of working style the kind of business that these three companies are having are like having any kind of similarity with them absolutely not each one of them is doing a all together separate kind of business okay one is into pharmaceutical one is into fmcg another one is into construction business so if i'll talk about the kind of cash flows with which i need to discount maybe for like future 5 years down the line 10 years down the line 15 years down the line is it likely a kind of a possibility that i should go for such kind of discount rate which is uh, the kind of equal one for all of these particular three industries absolutely not for each of these okay i need to have a different kind of discounting rate the kind of discounting rate that i may apply for a pharmaceutical company it may be altogether different from the one which i'll be like applying for an fmcg that's a likely possibility why because discounting rate should be such wherein you can compare the kind of intra uh, company business let's suppose procter and gamble uh, png is one of the company with a uh, in the fmcg business then there is another one hindustan unilever now there is a likely possibility that i'll be like having a discount rate which is common let's say 10% for assumption for both of them why because both of them are working in the same kind of industry so it will be better for me to compare the results if in case i'll be like having the same kind of discounting rate but if in case i talk about let's suppose rahesa developers or maybe sari homes or comparing the same with procter and gamble or like with like hindustan unilever it will be very 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 difficult for me to assess the kind of performance uh, with the kind of these four companies because seeing the fact that these four companies are working in all together different kind of functionalities and similarities okay they are working in entirely different industries so where in you get an opportunity to adjust your discount rate based on the kind of risk that you are handling up okay nowadays post demonetization we all know that the kind of uh, kind of impact this demonetization has dropped on particularly the construction companies construction has primarily stopped for many of the companies okay during that particular moment of time in after 9 june or 9th november post 9th november it happened so the kind of impact that these companies had 
it was a worse one okay it was adverse certainly if i'll compare the kind of impact this company had like the construction ones with the remaining industries they did fall back like a bit more okay why because their beta was adjusted accordingly there were risk prone industries okay so wherein i adjust my discounting rate on the basis of risk that i am taking up then this particular method is basically known as risk adjusted discount rate method this was all i was trying to make you understand with the kind of concept which i was delivering to you okay risk adjusted discount rate method basically calls for adjusting your discount rate so that you can project okay and reflect your project risk basically okay we all know this thing that the net present value of a project it can be found out by discounting the project cash flows with the average cost of capital we all know this okay if in case i can see that the net present value is greater than 0 we usually accept the project obviously why because i'm getting something out of that project so i'll definitely welcome that project with open arms i'll accept it up and this particular risk adjusted discount rate method it calls for uh, the adjusting of this particular uh, discount rate in order to in reflect the project risk now coming to like how we'll be like able to do it okay so then there is a concept over here which is i plus n plus dk okay rk is basically the risk adjusted discount rate how will be like able to compute it up we'll be adding risk free rate of interest to it okay that is usually 6% 6 to 7% plus we'll be having the adjustment of the firm's normal risk okay what kind of normal risk is the firm bearing let's suppose 1% 2% 2.5% down the line accordingly and on top of it we'll be adjusting for the differential risk of project k by project k i simply mean let's suppose i am into a construction kind of business okay i'm setting up a plant in odisha okay however having said that there is some kind of a like difficulty and there are some of the obstacles which i am facing in my regular day to day life if i'll talk about the kind of project that i am setting up in odisha there is a likely chances that somehow uh, i'll have to bear a bit more risk why because odisha is not a developed uh, state not not that developed okay if i'll talk about the bangalore hyderabad mumbai delhi odisha being a state okay wherein uh, the kind of uh, facilities the infrastructure facilities the other facilities are still yet to reach in a proper way okay so i will have that additional risk which will be likely to be adjusted in my reports so i'll be adding my risk free interest rate i'll be adding to that the adjustment for my firm's normal kind of risk plus the adjustment of that differential risk that i'll be taking up for that project which i'm likely to set up in odisha okay then i'll be able to get a figure that how much was my risk adjusted discount rate with the help of this particular concept now if i talk about npv we all are aware of it it's pretty much simple so what amount am i getting every year okay i'll be dividing the same with 1 plus r adr that is my discounting rate and out of the same i'll be deducting my initial investment i'll get to know whether i should go ahead with the project or not if in case the net present value is positive definitely i'll go for it if in case it's negative then the story is over then and there perfect guys cool now coming to the limitations of radr method okay every method basically calls in for some of the pros as well as for the cons okay i told you something related to the pros about it okay what are the positives of having this method it is absolutely a great method if in case i'll talk about that i need to set up a project okay and i need to take risk into the consideration okay i won't be able to take up the same discount rate for each and every project that I'm, that i am entering into okay my projects will be different the kind of risks that i'll be taking for that projects will be different altogether okay and it's always and always prudent to have a risk adjusted discount rate approach why because since all the projects are different their risk will be different okay this is something which which is with relation to the positives of the site okay coming to the limitations now the first limitation is it is very very difficult to estimate dk that is the adjustment for differential risk of project consistently it is very very difficult and and 
often it is very uh, like it's a determined one in an extremely ad hoc and an arbitrary manner okay i talk about the ceo of the company okay you go to a ceo okay cfo basically okay better example would be cfo you go to a cfo of a company okay and you ask him sir uh, we are going to uh, assume okay and we are going to uh, get dk into the picture okay so uh, what estimate should we take up okay they'll go for some of the analysis okay and finally they'll be taking up one such figure which will be based on their judgment okay this is something that we'll be assuming okay you can't get the exact figure of it okay all you'll be doing it you'll be obtaining and bringing onto the paper a figure which is based on some of the perceptions and assumptions okay so it is very 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 difficult to estimate dk consistently there is a likely possibility that the one cfo of one particular company will be like having the kind of uh, dk as compared to altogether different with the one which will be setting up by another company cfo because that is certainly based on the you know, manner of your judgment so it is determined in a very extremely ad hoc and an arbitrary manner this is one limitation number 2 RADR method assumes that the risk increases with time at constant rate it assumes okay so it basically says that with each time lapse okay the way time gets increasing okay with the same amount with the same lapse of time your risk also increases with a constant rate can you think on the similar page with like are we like on a similar page with a kind of thing uh, with the, this thinking uh, that this assumption is correct absolutely not there might be a possibility that this assumption may fail to pre- uh, prove valid at times okay and this assumption may not be very much valid but it's a limitation it's an inherent limitation that it assumes that the risk basically increases with time at a constant rate which may not happen so this was all about risk adjusted discount rate method now i am sure that you guys must be like clear with this particular concept but in order to ensure that you guys get the complete clarity of this particular topic i have incorporated an example just for you guys to make you understand this concept in a much better way so my next slide will be an example for you guys a project with an initial cost of 15000 rupees is expected to produce net cash flows of rupees 8000 9000 10000 and 11000 for each of the next four years the firm's cost of capital is 12% but the manager perceives the risk for this particular project to be of 20% discount rate would be appropriate for this particular project all we need to analyze and bring on to the paper are two things number one what is the net present value of the project at the firm's cost of capital and what is the rdr npv of the project number one thing would be Number one would be simply the kind of net present value that you'll be obtaining if in case you'll be having the firm's cost of capital as 12%. Okay, we'll be having uh, the cash flow expectation. Net present value will be like detected with this 12%. And in the next one, we'll be computing the same with 20%. Okay, why? Because the risk adjusted discount rate for this particular project will be 20%. So let's mark the beginning with the first sub part and that will be if in case i'll be using the cost of capital that is 12 percent my npv would be rupees 8000 cash flow that was for the first year i'll be dividing the same with 1.12 okay that is one plus the discounting rate that is the 12 percent so that is that will be the cash flow my my present value of the cash flow for the first year for the next year it will be 9000 rupees why the cash flow was rupees 9000 I'll be dividing the same with 1.12 to the power 2. Why? Because that is second year. For the third year, it's going to be rupees 10,000. Okay. I'll be dividing the same with 1.12 to the power 3. Why? Because that is the NPV for third year. And lastly, that will be 10,000 for the fourth year as well. I'll be dividing the same with 1.12 to the power 4. And out of all these cash flows, the present value of all these cash flows that I'll be obtaining, I'll be deducting my initial investment. That was rupees 15,000. So I did got a net present value of rupees 13,433. This is, if in case I'll be like having the discounting rate of 12%. 
Now, if in case I need to get a risk adjusted discount rate NPV, okay, it will be lower. Why? Because we would be discounting the cash flows with a higher rate that is of 20%. Now, how, how do I know that? I have like marked it for you guys as well over here. If in case I, I'll be like having a discount rate of 20%, my first year cash flow would be 8,000 divided by 1.20. The next year it will be 9,000 divided by 1.20 to the power 2. Third year it will be 10,000 divided by 1.20 to the power 3. For the fourth year it would be 10,000 divided by 1.20 to the power 4. And out of the same, I'll be deducting the initial investment that will be rupees 15,000. So I did got a net present value of rupees 9,002 rupees, which is certainly less than 13,433 rupees. So what we analyze with this particular topic and that was if in case I'll be like increasing my discounting rate, my net present value is going to go down for it. Okay, so lower the discounting rate, the greater will be the NPV. So accordingly if in case we'll be like adjusting uh, the discounting rate on the basis of risks it's going to provide us a different figure altogether and that's how this particular risk adjusted discount rate basically calls in for i hope you guys got a complete understanding with this particular concept perfect guys let's move towards the next great topic of this presentation and that will be certainty equivalent approach so guys you must have pondered about this thing that uh, wherever in any kind of business there are some of the cash flows which are certain in nature okay you knew it that you'll be able to receive the dividends you know it that you'll be, you'll be able to receive the interest amounts however having said that in any kind of business be it construction be it fmcg be it pharmaceutical okay there are some amount of cash flows which are just not certain okay you don't know whether they'll come or not okay that will be depending upon some certain kind of event they will be like depending upon some kind of occurrence of some particular situation and only then you'll be able to achieve those uh, cash flows okay certainty equivalent approach as the name suggests it basically helps you up in understanding that all you need to do is just take up only those cash flows which are certain okay think about a situation wherein i tell you okay dude i'll be paying you thousand rupees okay and that is certain okay on the other end i am telling you that if in case india wins against pakistan okay then i'll be providing you an amount of like two thousand rupees okay over and above that one thousand then what am i doing basically i am predicting my business revenues on the basis of something else on the occurrence of a particular event if in case that will happen definitely i'll get the money however if in case that doesn't happen at all i won't be able to get the money okay same goes with the project as well now while taking up a project you'll be thinking whether i should go ahead with that project or not will it be feasible for you to draw up your net present value on the basis of that uncertain cash flows as well absolutely not you won't be able to get to a point whether you should invest in that particular project or not why because you are still focusing on something which is not in your hand okay that is uncertain so this particular approach basically says if in case you are drawing your attention towards any kind of project okay be it your construction project be it your pharmaceutical setup or anything okay all you need to do is you need to consider the certain cash flows that that you will definitely achieve okay and for that there is no no gap okay wherein between the kind of understanding and there is uh, no gap between the kind of realization of the same okay so certainty equivalent method basically it aims at converting the uncertain cash flows into the certain cash flows using the certainty equivalent coefficients okay so all you need to consider is those which are certain in nature and how it can be done let's suppose i say that uh, i'll be earning a cash flow of rupees 1000 okay but the certainty coefficient index says that the possibility is a 60 percent so what am i going to do I'm going to multiply that 1000 with that 60% and I'll be booking uh, if I'll talk about uh, the kind of certain cash flows only 600 okay and I won't go for an option of including 400 into that 600 and making it 1000 not at all I'll be just taking up 600 in order to reach to a 
conclusion whether I should invest in a project or not. This is all about certainty equivalent approach. It says NPV under CE approach will be equal to alpha T into AT divided by 1 plus I to the power T that is the time period minus the initial investment. NPV would be the net present value. AT will be the expected cash flow that you will receive at the year T that is maybe like 1, 2, 3, 4 any. Alpha T will be the certainty equivalent coefficient that I told you of. Okay, 1000 will be the cash flow for the year into certainty equivalent coefficient that will be like 60%. You will get uh, 600 out of it. You'll be dividing the same with 1 plus I. I is basically the risk free interest rate that will be to the power of T that is the number of period. And out of the same, you'll be deducting your initial investment in order to reach to a particular conclusion whether you should invest in that project or not. This was all about certainty equivalent approach. Now, since I want to make you this concept utmost clear, I have incorporated another example for you just to ensure that you guys get the complete understanding of the same. Let's move ahead towards the example and that will be. So it says. A project has an initial investment of rupees 1400. Its net cash flows are expected to be rupees 900, rupees 1000, and 1400 for the each of the next three years. Okay. The certainty equivalent coefficients of the projects are 0 0.75, 0 0.55, and 0 0.35 for the each of the next three years with a 6% risk free rate of return, that is, risk less rate of return. Determine the certain Certainty basically that will be certain net uh, net present value of a project. Okay, and that will be like very simple All you need to do is you just need to multiply your cash flows with the C coefficients So that will be 900 into 0 0.75 because that was for the first year You'll get a figure that will be like certain cash flow for that year You'll be dividing the same with 1.06 that is the riskless rate of return for the next year It will be 1000 into 0 0.55 that means 0 0.55 rupees 550 is the certain cash flows for that particular year you will be dividing the same with 1.06 to the power 2 because that is for the year 2 plus 1400 into 3 point into 0 0.35 that is the coefficient uh, for the third year okay you'll be dividing the same with 1.06 to the power 3 and out of the same while including all these cash flows you'll be deducting 1400 that is the initial investment you did you made so you get a net present value of rupees 138 which is positive one so should we accept this project absolutely we can if in case we don't have any other project into consideration we can go ahead with this why because this is providing us the positive net present value so all i can say is with this particular example the conclusion higher the uncertainty lower will be the ce factors and that is that can be simply suggested with this example as well so I hope I was able to give you a proper glance with each and every kind of understanding with a relation to risk adjusted discount rate approach and certainty equivalent approach as well. These approaches are like guys very very important. You will get to see so many questions revolving around these approaches while I'll start discussing with you the relevant questions which are asked in CA final examination as well. So all you need to do is just revise the concept which I'm telling you. My efforts, Edupedia's efforts will go in vain, will go futile if in case you don't revise and retain your topics. This is something which I ask you for each and every time. All you need to do is just revise. God bless you all with this. I sum up and conclude my topic and my presentation. I'll see you in the forthcoming presentation with the remaining topics of this particular chapter before I'll start marking the beginning of the questions. Thank you. On behalf of the ADPDA world, keep interacting with our questions, queries and YouTube comment boxes. I will love to answer each one of your queries and answers. That's for sure. If in case you have liked our video, if in case you find it informative, do give us a thumbs up. It will help us in, in motivating ourselves for providing you the best kind of videos in the future years to come. Stay connected. That will help us in understanding your needs way, way, way better, guys. I'll see you in the next presentation with a lot more exciting topics. Till then, sign up. God bless you all. Good luck. Bye.